President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta today addressed the nation. And from the reaction of Kenyans, for the first time I can see Kenyans very happy with the president. So I want to try and give a summary of the president's speech. Because I know probably some of you guys did not listen to the entire speech because it was a bit long. So I'll try to give a summary and I'll also try to be very brief because a summary must be very brief. The first thing which the president addressed was the movement into Nairobi and, up and outside Nairobi. The movement, the cessation of movement into Nairobi and out of Nairobi, Mombasa and Mandera will lapse tonight. Basically from tomorrow 4 a.m., Kenyans will be free to go to Nairobi, to go to Mombasa, and to go to Mandera. But one thing was not very clear from the president's address. Whether the borders, our borders, have been opened. Whether Kenyans are now free to travel from Kenya to Uganda, or from Kenya to Tanzania, or from Tanzania to Kenya, or from Uganda to Kenya. The, that, was, that was not very clear. I don't know whether he forgot to address that particular concern because so many Kenyans have actually asked me whether the borders have been opened. So probably they'll issue another communications just to make clarification on uh, our borders. But Kenyans are actually free beginning tomorrow 4 a.m. to travel to any part of the country they want. But the president is calling for all Kenyans to take caution, to try and protect the elderly. The second thing the president addressed is the issue of curfew. Remember, we had the lockdown. Lockdown meant you couldn't move out of Nairobi, you couldn't move out of Mombasa, you couldn't enter Nairobi, you couldn't enter Mombasa, you couldn't enter Mandera, you couldn't leave Mandera. So that was a lockdown in those three counties. But now, the curfew was also there. But this curfew has been extended for the next 30 days. So which means if you are going home, you must always plan to reach home by 9 p.m. And you can only leave by 4 a.m. So that one has been extended for the next 30 days. And Kenyans are uh, not very happy about that. But personally, I don't see anything wrong with that. As long as you can plan yourself well, you can travel to Nairobi, you can travel to Mombasa with proper planning, I don't think it's bad. But what was Sako? are proposing that the president extends it to, let's say, from uh, 11 p.m. to <laughs> 4 p.m. But personally, I don't have any problem with the curfew. It's convenient. The Ilaya Samoja was a bit difficult. But yes, I, to, I think it's okay. Then the other thing which the president addressed is that in the next 21 days, government shall observe the patterns of interactions. If there will be a spike in the trend, the country will return to lockdown at zero options. So basically, the offer which the president gave Kenyans are conditional. So they'll monitor. If irresponsible Kenyans from Nairobi will migrate to the village and take the disease to the village, villages, then the president will, without any option, declare lockdown again without any so what this means is that as a country and as citizens of this country we must carry ourselves with the highest level of responsibility so that's something which the president talked about the other thing is how the country proceeds from here shall be determined by the behavior of each one of us so he's calling on kenyans to be our brother's keepers because if you are not careful, already in this country, the ICU beds are almost full in most major, major hospitals. People are sick outside here. So it means it, the responsibility will be upon individual. So it's upon me to protect the people I love. It's upon them to protect me. So that's what the president is telling Kenyans. The other thing which the president is telling Kenyans is that you should avoid non-essential travels up country. 
So if there's nothing you're going to do in the village, please just stay where you are. Because of course, there's nothing you're going to help those people much with if it's not essential. The best thing you can do, to my impressor to your father, to my impressor to your sister, to my impressor to your brother, and the rest. Unless it is necessary. But if it's not necessary, please try to avoid it. But if you do, you always try to maintain social distancing. You wash your hands, sanitize, especially when interacting with the elderly and those of depressed immune system. So if, if you know you have a, a parent who is diabetic, then you must ensure you protect them. Those vulnerable people, the elderly. So the president is saying you must. Then the president is also talking of churches. These ones will be opened in the next three weeks. But only, uh, only maximum of 100 people will be allowed in church and mosques. And it won't end there. So if you, if you have those big churches where they, they, we have even 100, uh, I mean 1,000 or 500 people, then they'll have to do now with 100 people. Those big mosques, only 100 people. I don't know how they'll take the precaution, but only 100 people will be allowed. And these people will only be allowed to interact for a maximum of one hour. Then they leave. So I think churches can be innovative so that instead of having two services, they can have four services or even five services. But it's also very clear that anybody who is over 58 years will not be allowed into church. So what is not also not very clear is if the pastor is over falling under that age bracket. And again, Sunday school will not be there. Because, you know, children normally like playing a lot. So they can get the disease, take it home. So the president is saying, we are still going to lock down the children. I think from 13 years coming downwards. And those of 58 years moving forward ahead there, those are vulnerable groups. So for them, maneno ya kanisa, na maneno ya kuswala, yo, they have to wait. Then the next important thing is PSV vehicles. Moving inside and outside Nairobi, Mombasa and Mandera. These were the counties which were under lockdown. Counties which were under lockdown. Mombasa, Mandera, and Nairobi. So if you are planning to live here today, to go to Nairobi, it, it will not be very easy using a public vehicle. It will not be very easy. So what they are recommending is that these public vehicles will require I mean, we'll require certificate, some certificates from the Ministry of Health and we'll also have to observe strict guidelines. So which means buses probably, if they, they are used to carrying 50 people, they'll have nothing to do with it. maybe half of the 30 or 20, you know, things like those. So it will not be very easy for even people now to move. But again, Kenyans, are, you know, are very innovative. So they'll have matatus, Playing Nairobi up to Pale, Pale border along the borders of Nairobi County, then people will will cross <laughs> on foot. They get their buses there. Kenyans are very peculiar people. That's what exactly what they are going to do. But the president is very clear that means of transport to those cities, those three counties, with the public vehicles, they have to get certificates, both from Ministry of Health and Ministry of transport so that one i don't have any problems then there is the flights local flights will resume on 15th of july but they will be subjected to strict guidelines and protocols issued by the ministry of health so which means for example if i want to fly from nairobi to mombasa you know, those are two counties which are under lockdown. I'll do it. But there's going to be strict guidelines. Maybe the social distancing, people will have to sanitize, the temperatures will have to be taken so that you don't really spread because it would be easy. This, this thing will be easily spread through this means of transport. But again, the country must open up. 
international flights will uh, will resume on august 1st but again with the same strict guidelines so what i still don't know is what about countries which still will not allow flights into those territories probably they'll start with the countries which have opened up moving forward but i think the, the entire world has now come to term with this disease and we are going to live with it so i think most count, ca countries will actually be open by that time so international travels so there will be restrictions on political gatherings and any other gathering of any nature extended by 30 days so politicians will still not gather so you can't just call a gathering of people who are homes and start telling them the way you are the best for them in 2022 that one you'll have to wait again for the next 30 days so there will be no political gatherings Dugu Francis at least should listen to this <laughs> Uh, Didmas Baraza and the rest who are used to political gatherings still suspended and in my view let us just respect that so no political gatherings Okiona politician Amegaba please chase them away because that's how they are going to help spread this disease and lastly weddings and funerals again extended for the next 30 days so wale wamezoea kukula kwa matanga hiyo hakuna the next 30 days is when you can start attending those matangas weddings i've seen people doing weddings but under very strict conditions but that's not very clear on on this of course even funerals the government give a guidelines that strictly not more than 15 people wedding also i think there's a maximum number of people and the social distancing must be maintained. So, in my view, those are the key points which the president talked about. But the only thing which is not very clear to me was the fact that our borders, are we free to cross to Uganda? Are Ugandans free to cross to Kenya? Probably the president will have to make a clarification on that one. Thank you guys and please may you have a good day.